If you run a business with customers, you probably would like to know exactly what makes them tick, which interests predict that they'll be a customer and which don't. Now, I'm not talking about what your target customers or audience looks like. For example, 100% of my customers drink water. That doesn't help. What does help are differential attributes that separate or segment your target customers from the general population. For example, if 50% of my customers like cooking, but only 20% of the general population do, that's a signal. But why is this information useful? Well, for one, you can bootstrap a Google Ads campaign very quickly with limited conversion data. See, most ad agencies will tell you to run a new campaign, you need to first burn a lot of money and then wait two or three weeks for Google to learn what your target customer looks like. And then if you're lucky, Google Ads will reveal to you what its top signals are but it still doesn't give you any control over the magical black box that is Google Ads Smart Bidding. Instead, if you're able to get these numbers from your own first party data, like from Google Analytics, you can skip that entire process and burn of cash and just target your ads manually based on these signals. Now to be fair to Google Ads, Smart Bidding does a lot more than this, but I found that I can get very fast results by limiting my Smart Bidding target audiences to what I'm gonna show in this video. Disclaimer, this is not advice. And the second good reason to do this is so you can better understand your customers and what separates them from the general public. For example, I know that many of my paying customers are in market for advertising and marketing services. Coincidence why I'm making this video? So we're assuming you have Google Analytics 4 set up. If you don't, stop this and go do that. And then you just have to make sure that you have conversion tracking set up on Google Analytics 4. So you at least want to track purchases so you can see what separates them from your general web traffic. And you can also set up other micro conversions like signups in case you don't have a lot of purchases at the start. Next, you want to go to this explore tab here and just hit new blank exploration and I'll walk you through exactly what to do. All right, so first let's give this a fun name. Now for this video, I'm only going to be showing you the signals for my registered users my purchase information and gonna keep secret so my competitors can't see that. All right, now let's set up some segments to see how they differentiate from each other. So here I'm gonna click user segment and I'm gonna define this as registered users based on any user who has triggered a sign up event, meaning they came here and signed up. In your case, if you're doing purchases, just click purchase, but for this video, we'll only be doing signups. Now I'll do this again to represent the general population or all of our website visitors. So click user segment. There's this weird bug that I found here where you actually have to give it some criteria or else it crashes. So just do first visit. So this will basically be all users who had a first visit, which will be everybody. Now we'll go to dimensions. This is what we're interested in and go to demographics and then click on interests. There may be more options here based on when you watch this video and you can try with the other ones if you'd like. Import this and then it'll add it to your exploration. Then here under metrics, we just want a simple user count. So go under the user thing and scroll down and look for total users, check that and we're good. Now we can figure how we want the table to look. So we want each row to have a separate interest in it and then each column value to be the number of total users spread across each of these two segments. So now Google's gonna populate our data and take a look. So here we see each row represents an interest and then this column here shows all users and then this column here shows registered users, people who signed up to our service. And we can set this to give us 250 rows so we can see more data. So this looks neat and makes for a pretty graph but it's not useful to us yet. What we care about is what separates the registered users from the general population or which features are they more likely to be a part of than everyone else. To figure this out, we're gonna do some post-processing in Google Sheets. So find this button here, looks like a download arrow, and then you can open this up in Google Sheets, which is super helpful. Click this blue button here, and then you'll open up a new sheet with all the data in it. All right, let's make column A a little bit wider so we can actually read the thing. And then we can verify that column B shows us all of our users, or for our purposes, we'll consider this a general population. Column C are the registered users, the people we want to figure out what makes them so special and actually register for our service. Next, I'm going to add a new column here to the right, which is going to mimic that performance max index column we saw from Google, which shows us the relative likelihood someone is going to be a registered user here versus someone of the general population. To calculate this likelihood, I'm going to use what Google Ads uses in its Insights tab, which we can only assume they may play a part in how smart bidding works underneath that black box. Basically, the likelihood index is the percent of users who convert divided by the percent of users in the population for a given attribute. For our purposes, the number of users who convert is 131, or the number of registered users, and the total population here is 4,053. We'll just say all users because we don't have access to all of Google's data, so 
we'll just have to substitute with all of our website traffic. And to give a concrete example, let's use Technofiles here where there's 2679 for all users and 88 for registered users. Now we can plug these numbers in, 88 Technofiles out of 131 signups divided by 2679 Technofiles out of 4053 general users. This works out to 67% of signups are technophiles versus 66% are technophiles of the general web users. This number works out to 1.02, which sort of means that technophiles are 2% more likely to convert and sign up for my service than non-technophiles. So now to figure this out in the spreadsheet, because we really care about the rankings of these, not any one absolute value, we can put this in here, so just create a new formula and then divide the number of people who register over the total number of registered users, and then the denominator, do the same thing but for all users, so you can see my cells here in Google Sheets that I zoomed in to show you. And then X out of the suggested autofill, I'm gonna show you have to do something to make sure you refer to the absolute cell for total users for all and registered. So edit this again, but then here put in a dollar sign before D and before nine, and then same in the other denominator. That way when you copy and paste this to all the other rows, it'll keep that denominator absolute. All right, now that we can copy and paste the formula, let's go do that here. So only the numerators within each part will be copy pasted properly. So these numbers will be good. And then we can copy this entire range here. We'll get both column A and B and then put this in a new tab so we can sort them properly and do a little visualization. So now I copied them and then do paste values only so we don't copy the formula. Then after I expand column A again, I'm gonna go and sort them in descending order by column B. Like I said, I only care about the most likelihood to convert interests, which are now risen to the top relative to all users. And here we can add additional formatting. So click customize here and then do color scale. And you can make this all sorts of pretty colors. So things that are lower value or less likely to convert, set the number to one, which is the midpoint. Anything over one is more likely to convert. So basically we wanna target any of these interests who have a value over one, meaning they're more likely to sign up than someone here in the red. So you'll have to do this for your own data. And again, these are just my registered users. I'm not gonna to dig too deeply into this, like why electronic dance music fans are more likely to sign up than non-electronic dance music fans. If you do want to look into it, you can always Google a little bit for statistics around those segments. And you can see that a lot of times these interests are often proxies to deeper demographic slices that just so happen to be more likely to use your service or buy from you in this case. For example, here with income or education levels. And this should go without saying, but this does not mean that I should go to a bunch of electric dance music clubs and advertise my data scraping service to those people. What you really want to do is use them to find an intersection. For example, people who search for data scraping and are also EDM fans have a higher likelihood of being potential customers of mine based on this data. And one more thing is that we didn't cover in market segments here. These are similar to interests in Google advertising, except these are people who are actively researching something to buy. For example, a lot of my paying customers are looking for marketing services. For some reason, this isn't available in Google Analytics 4. I don't know why. There's a lot of things that are still, I feel, under development with GA4. I'm hoping they add it soon, but you can still get the in-market segments if you use the old universal Google Analytics, which is set to retire in 2023. So basically, when you're watching this video, hopefully the in-market segments have made it to GA4 by now. Otherwise, maybe check the comment section and there will be something to help you out there. Well, I hope you found this useful and that you're able to follow the steps here and collect this data for your own business. It's really helped me out a lot with my own marketing and advertising endeavors, so hopefully it can help you too. Anyway, thanks for watching until the end and see you in the next one.